Shunsui Kyoraku is the former captain of the 8th division and he's the current head captain of the Gotei 13. Now this is a character who is at least 1000 years old from the moment that we meet him in chapter 102. His personality is characterized as being laid back and quite goofy. He loves nothing more than drinking sake and sweet talking women. Contrary to this colorful positive picture, Shunsui is quite possibly the most complex character in all of Bleach. Whilst we do get glimpses of his past during the Tenback the Pendulum arc and the Soul Society arc, it isn't until we reach the Thousand Year Blood War arc that pivotal details about his backstory are revealed to us. In today's video, I want to highlight the significance of his relationship with Nanao Issei and discuss how Shunsui's flashback evokes the themes of love over duty. In addition to this, Shunsui Zanpakuto Katan Kyokotsu plays a major role in helping us to understand the weight of the decisions that Shunsui had made in his past. The chapters where we learn more details about his backstory are called the theater suicide, and this is in direct reference to both his Bankai abilities and the nature of the tragic events that had unfolded in the earlier parts of his life. So join me as we try to make sense of the tragic past of Shunsui Kyoraku. <laughs> Shunsui Kyoraku has some notably distinctive additions to his captain's uniform. When I had first watched Bleach, I never really put much thought into why he decides to appear the way that he does. His straw hat, along with the two elegant hairpins, as well as the pink kimono, definitely make him stand out. I'd honestly believe that Kubo had made these additions to his character design in order to make him come across as eccentric. However, it isn't long before we uncover the somewhat horrifying reason behind why Shunsui dresses the way that he does during his battle against the Sternritter Lil Barrow. Kubo adds so many more layers to Shunsui's character via this flashback alone, and it gives us more insight into why Shunsui turns out the way that he does. Now the first details about Shunsui's backstory are revealed during the Soul Society arc in chapter 155. We find out that both Shunsui and Ukitake were like sons to head captain Yamamoto. They were the first two Shinigami to earn the rank of captain after having graduated from Yamamoto's Shin Shinigami Academy, an institute which head captain Yamamoto had founded 2000 years ago. During the Tenback the Pendulum arc, we learn a bit more information about Shunsui along with a brief interaction that he has with Nanao. At this time, she was still a child back then and her assistant captain position was filled by none other than Lisa Yadomaru, who is now a Vizard. Now, the real fleshing out of Shunsui's backstory is done during the Thousand Year Blood War arc between chapters 647 to 653. His backstory is told to us while Nanao decides to join Shunsui in his battle against Lil Barrow. The assistant captain to the 8th division does in fact have her own sword which is basically an inherited Zambokdo. In addition to this, we also get the reveal of Shunsui's Bankai and overall, these few chapters here during the Thousand Year Blood War arc reveal a lot of insights into the relationship between Shunsui and Nanao. In addition to this, there's also an amazing passage within the Can't Fear Your Own World light novels which also expands upon their relationship, but I'll talk more about this towards the end of the video. Once Shunsui activates his Bankai, he is heavily overwhelmed by attacks from Lil Barrow, who has transformed into his holy form. This second form is incredibly powerful, as Lil states that neither weapons nor decapitation can kill him because he is the emissary of God. In the battle against Lil Barrow, Kubo chooses to employ figurative language relating to religion, and this is in part due to the sword that Nanao ends up using later on. On. Just as Katen Kyokotsu is about to convince Shunsui to run away, Nanao enters the battle and begs Shunsui to give her her Zanpakuto. She urges him to forget the promise that he had made to her mother in light of the severity of this situation. Shunsui does not seem to be shocked by this revelation that Nanao has known all along about what had happened to her mother. He goes on to reveal her Zanpakuto which is called Kyokotsu. This is one half of the two Zanpakuto that Shunsui was wielding. During chapter 6, 651, we take a brief look into the past as we are shown Shunsui as a child. He is awoken by his sister-in-law. This woman was the mother of Nanao Ise. As Nanao makes an attack on Lil Barrow using her Zanpakuto, we start to see a juxtaposition of the past and the present, as Kubo highlights the importance of Nanao Zanpakuto and how this links to Shunsui's backstory. Katen Kyokotsu is a Zanpakuto that exists as a sword pair, consisting of Katen and Kyokotsu. Kyokotsu is the 
literal child of Shunsui Zanpakdo spirit. She gave birth to Kyoko Tsu for the sole purpose of hiding Nanao Zanpakdo. This was all done at the request of Nanao's mother. As Shunsui explains, the Issei clan is a long line of female Shinto priests who oversaw and carried out rituals and rites. There have only been female births throughout the history of the Issei family. Therefore, they have always brought in husbands from other families into their clan. However, due to the Issei family curse, any man who joins into the family will die an early death. Whether or not if this was a rumor, Nanao's mother took precautions in order to avoid the curse affecting her daughter. She married outside of the family, but tragically, her husband, Nanao's father, ended up dying shortly after. Shunsui then makes the shocking revelation that Nanao's mother was his older brother's wife. Once Nanao's mother had come into the picture, the tensions between Shunsui and his older brother were smoothed out, to the extent that he would visit more frequently. As we cut to the flashback of Shunsui's past, he states that once the husband dies, it is fairly common for noble families to cut all ties with the wife who had married into the family. They send her back to her original family home where she had come from. This unfortunately meant that Nanao's mother had to return to the Issei clan, which she had in fact escaped from. Pondering over the fact that an Issei woman cannot escape her fate due to their Zanpakdo, Nanao's mother was desperate to release her unborn daughter from this curse. Shunsui offered to take the sword and hide it for her. This was in part thanks to the nature of his second Zanpakdo spirit who loves to play hide and seek. We need to remember that the essence of Katen Kyokotsu lies in its remarkable ability to make children's games into reality. Once Nanao receives her Zanpakdo, we immediately cut back to the present time just as she is about to land a blow to Lil Barrow. Nanao is well aware of the risks that are associated with accepting her blade, and she accepted them either way. In her conversation with Shunsui, she states that she will accept the curse of the Issei clan of her own free will. We then do get some additional exposition about the Issei clan, as Nanao comes from a family where all the women are priests who oversee rituals and do not own individual Zanpakdo. Instead, the head of the family in every generation inherits but a single Zanpakdo. It is a ceremonial sword as it has no sharpened edge and it has no ability to theoretically kill. It is said that the sword has the power to oppose gods. And given Lil's talk about sinners and the light of judgment, I think that this is an excellent way for Kubo to foreshadow his death with the upcoming chapters. The name of the now Zanpakdo is Shinken Hakyoken, or in other words, the Eight Mirrored Sword. The Shinken, or Divine Swords, are a collection of ancient Zanpakdo that belong to the noble houses of the Soul Society. Each of the swords are left in the care of their respective noble family, and apart from the Eight Mirror Sword, there are two other divine swords. The first one is known as Enra Kyoten, and it is the family treasure of the Sunayashiro clan. The second divine sword is known as Muramasa, and it belongs to the Kuchiki clan. Muramasa was actually featured as the main antagonist of the Zanpakuto Rebellion arc, a anime-only filler arc which had taken place between episodes 230 to 265. The Eight Mirror Sword is said to be capable of taking the power of a god into itself and dispersing it off into eight directions. The blade itself reflects the power of the godly opponent that its wielder is facing off against. In chapter 652, Nanao reveals her Zanpakuto as Lil comments on the fact that it shines with a rather vulgar brightness. We then transition to Shunsui's backstory as a very young Nanao listens from the shadows as her mother urges Shunsui to take the Zanpakuto which belongs to the Issei clan. She explains that as it exerts influence only on those who are from the Issei clan, Shunsui will not be harmed in any way for merely possessing it. Now that her husband, Shunsui's older brother, is dead, Shunsui is the only person who she could depend on. In a flashback that occurs a few years later, we see Nanao as she is enrolled into the Shinigami Academy. From her point of view, Shunsui was a revered captain whose pink kimono was eerily similar to the one that her mother had used to own. Even his hairpins were exactly the same as Nanao's mother's. Nanao was initially surprised when she was first enrolled into the 8th division, and additionally she was taken in by an old couple who she had never seen before. I'm certain that these two old people were in fact Shunsui's parents. He had probably arranged for them to take her in behind the scenes after she had entered into the Shinigami Academy. Nanao was then issued with an Asauchi, similar to all other Shinigami who are given a blank Zanpakuto during their training. Unfortunately, Nanao was unable to imprint the essence of her soul onto her Asauchi, but Nanao's natural talent for Kido was recognized 
organized and she was able to take the Gotei 13 entrance exam early. Since she was without a Zanpakuto, Nanao was determined to make it into the Kido Corps. They perform an OVC ceremonial rituals within the Serete. However, she ended up being assigned to the 8th Division in order to serve as the assistant captain to Shunsui. Nanao notices how Shunsui has changed his kimono and he has now removed his hairpins. These subtle changes had allowed her to recognize Shunsui as the man that her mother had entrusted something very important to. As Nanao continues her battle against Lil Barrow, we get more information about Shunsui's past as he ruminates over the fact that he blames himself for the death of Nanao's mother. The next panel shows Ukitake inform him that his sister-in-law has just received the death penalty. Apparently, the Central 46 has just found her guilty of losing a sacred treasure. Sadly, her execution was carried out the day before. This is absolutely heartbreaking and when we view the next panel where Shunsui's brother is on his deathbed, I literally wanted to shed tears here. Following the death of his brother, he was entrusted with the hairpins that had belonged to Nanao's mother. Shunsui tragically asks himself, why is it that everybody trusts him with the things that they value the most and then they go on to die. This is a brilliant backstory that contrasts with Shunsui's usual carefree nature. We see that he is a man who has had to endure a lot of tragedy within a very short span of time. Shunsui thinks to himself that he is no good at dealing with heavy stuff and this leads to him stepping in to fight side by side with Nanao. The parallels here are insane as it echoes how Shunsui was given the responsibility of being the head captain after the death of Yamamoto. And it's once again him being in this position where he is entrusted to lead the Gotei 13, something which head captain Yamamoto had valued dearly. Within the first volume of Can't Feel Own World, Tokinada Sunayashiro hints at having played a part in the death of Nanao's mother. Tokinada, who is paying a visit to the head captain, tries to provoke a negative reaction out of Nanao, who has concealed her presence. He mocks her, stating that if he had enough authority back then, then he would have teased and taught tormented her in much the same way as Rukia was treated. Tokinada also states that he would have given Shunsui a front row seat in the Garden of Judgment. Tokinada wonders if Shunsui would have tried to save Nanao's mother in a similar way to how Ichigo had saved Rukia. It is obvious that Tokinada is aware of the great sacrifice made by the former captain of the 8th division and he uses the death of Nanao's mother as a whipping rod to try and goad Shunsui into a negative state of mind during their brief interaction. Shunsui is a very unique character in Bleach. One of his greatest features is his ability to carry a burden whilst still maintaining a smile on his face. The war with the Quincy's had taken away two of the most important characters in his life. The first was Head Captain Yamamoto, who was undoubtedly a father figure to him. Then he ended up losing Ukitake, who was more than just a friend, he was a brother to him. It would be understandable to assume that Shunsui should have been in grief after losing these two individuals, but for the most part of the war, he had spent his time inspiring the other Shinigami not to lose hope and to move forward. Shunsui is the type of individual to prefer peace over war, but he considers it a necessity to have victory at any cost when a war begins. And we see Shunsui do some pretty insane stuff in order to ensure victory even at the cost of the pride and honor of the Soul Society. Some of the radical decisions that he made involved Kimpachi being trained as well as the release of Aizen from Muken so that he could fight alongside them. Even even if his decisions were hated by others, Shunsui took the full brunt of responsibility for the difficult decisions that he had to make. And additionally, he even accepted help from the Quincy who were betrayed by Yuhabak by forming an alliance with them before they made their way to the royal palace in order to challenge Yuhabak and the Shoot Starfall. The way that Shunsui leads the Gotei 13 is very different to head captain Yamamoto. And these radical decisions don't just end here because during the Can't Fear On World light novels, we see Shunsui making allegiances with the Espada, the Sternritter, and even the Fullbringers. This is a testament to Shunsui's new leadership style, which is in stark contrast to Head Captain Yamamoto's. The Thousand Year Blood War arc sheds a lot of light on several new aspects about Shunsui's character. And hopefully this video has helped you to better understand the backstory of Shunsui and how it is heavily linked to his assistant Nanao Ise. Via this backstory, we understand the significance of Shunsui's attire, learning about the true history behind the hairpins that he wears, along with the pink kimono too. We've now reached the point of the video where I want to hand over the discussion to all of you. What do you think about the past of Shunsui Kyoraku? Are you surprised to learn that Nanao has her very own inherited Zanpakuto? Was there anything about the Issei clan or Shunsui's history that I have forgotten to mention? Definitely let me know by
by continuing the discussion in the comments. And lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this video and I cannot wait to see you in my next Bleach video. A massive thank you goes out to all of my amazing Patreon supporters for helping to make this video possible. If you also want to support the channel and see your name in the end of my videos, then check out my Patreon which has loads of perks like early video access and so much more. Thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.